What is the right answer for you? Uh, should you go with a coil shock? Should you go with an air shock? Which one is better? Which one works better on the Ritmo AF? What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Mo Awesome here. And I don't think I have ever gotten so many Instagram messages to review a certain mountain bike product I've been riding as I have this Jade X coil shock. I've seen all your messages and all the comments, the emails. So I figured I do have enough time to finally give you guys my feedback on the Jade X coil shock and also compare compared to that air topaz shock that I was running previously. So we have the whole air versus coil debate to go over as well. But before we start off, just wanna make sure you guys know that both Hannah and I do ride for DVO suspension. Uh, so we are a little bit biased, but at the same time, we have seen how much they truly care about their customers and also making really awesome suspension. And they really do go above and beyond. Sometimes I think too far. I feel like Bryce and the owner would actually give uh, one of you guys like a massage if you guys were ever feeling uh, tired tired or just exhausted at a race. But uh, yeah, with that being said, sorry, Bryson, if you're watching this. So with that being said, I think it's time to get into the video. Uh, as old as you guys, if you can hit that like button, it helps out the channel a ton. And we can't do a review video without a little bit of riding. So let's hit the trails and come back and then we'll talk a little bit later on. Whew. So one nice thing about starting from this side, you get some stairs right off the bat. And that's where I initially felt Oh, I'm gonna have a good ride when I first put the coil on just because it's the first thing you drop into and it just feels so supple off the top. Now the fire out here has gotten really bad. A lot of bumps coming up. That's another place where there's a good indication things are gonna get good on the trail. As you guys can tell, a little bit of trail chatter. My first trail in this review is gonna be this, Lizard's Trail. And you guys have seen it a ton. It's kind of poppy, playful, some tech chunk. I really like it because the corners are really loose and off camber. Traction, when it's maximized, is definitely apparent. And that's the one thing I noticed with the coil is the rear end of the bike is just so planted, kind of in all conditions. But the cool thing with the Jade X is it retains the pop you want. You don't lose that. Jump into sandy, kind of off camber. That's where if traction's not maximized, it's not going to be good for you. Woo! Right. Oh, I can never... What's going on there? All right. Back on it. And yeah, as I was saying, you can really feel it in the corners when there's kind of some ruts or bumps. You just feel the rear end of the bike kind of glued to the ground. Make my way through here. It's not enough. I'm going to take this outside line. Let's try to cut in today. I wonder if this line's still here. It is. Oh, wow, kind of. Oh, nope. Oh, and I messed up, but I'm still alive. And yeah, you see, like, could kind of barely see which way I was going there, because, I mean, you guys saw the trail, but I mean, the bike just feels so planted. It doesn't really matter too much. Because it's so late in the day, we are gonna go back up because climbing is part of the game. That's where I really wanna kind of show you guys how impressed I am with this coil up. Now, I will have to admit to you guys, yeah, I do utilize the lockout a lot more on the Jade X than the Topaz I had on here earlier. It is apparent, and we're gonna try and make our way up this. Right now the shock is open, and I can definitely feel the bob, but I'm still making my way up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a lot more work though. Woo! Oh man. Okay. Woo! We cleaned it. That was with the shock. Oh my god, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Sorry guys. That was with the shock open. And talking handwriting is even tougher. So what I'm gonna do now, we're locking everything out. And that's where you guys, I am really blown away with the jadex is how stiff the lockout is i would almost go as far as saying i think it might be stiffer than the topaz which is crazy so this section is pretty steep i have the shock open right now i'm feeling it but i'm still bike still making its way up so you can still climb with it in open mode well, like I said, it is a bit more apparent. Where as soon as I lock it out, I just locked it out. 
Okay, let's go up then. Yeah, so much firmer and really impressive for a coil shock. Woo! Okay, so this is a trail that we don't ride too often on the channel. It's called Old Emerald and it is fast. So we're gonna make our way down. Woo! Yeah, there's the chunk. And wheelie into the chunk. Hop. Sorry, I'm trying to pay attention because I don't want to die, but I'm sure you guys understand. The biggest difference is going to be that initial stroke and the suppleness. But what I also like about this progressive spring is it really does give this the poppy feel of that air shock. Kind of best of both worlds. I am wishing I was running that Onyx up front. It makes you want a stiffer fork, which I'll explain a little bit later. You know what, I'll explain it a lot later. Sorry, I gotta pay attention. Woo, yeah. It is fast. Okay, right down here, don't die, Mo. Oh, come in, still got the responsiveness I want. Woo, big corner. Oh man, that was so good. Oh yeah, a little slalom course down here. Outside, off the corner. Oh man, right through here. And we are almost out, you guys. This is a really underrated trail. I forget how fun it is going down, but how is that? Okay, those who know, know. This is the worst part of this fire road. Shock is locked out. And we're gonna go up the steep way. Okay. Woo! Still made it. One last little section. Yeah. And we're up. Who says coils can't climb? I don't know if anyone actually says that, but this one definitely climbs. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that ride. I really did like that loop. I felt like there was a lot there that really allowed me to try to narrate the review slightly. I really just love Laguna this time of year. A lot of people think I'm crazy, but I personally like Laguna when it's running kind of fast and loose. And maybe that's my SoCal speaking, but yeah, I really do like it when trails are kind of dry and dusty and blown out. I know it sounds masochistic, but for whatever reason, I really do kind of prefer that type of riding terrain. Okay, so right off the back, let's just jump into the down. Downhill. Now for the downhill, the one thing that really is apparent with the Jade X coil, especially coming from that Air Topaz, the Air Topaz still is a really good shock, but the Jade X coil, you do feel the difference in traction, especially in that initial stroke. Now where you're really going to feel this is when the trail starts to get really techy, but also there's a little bit of a corner as well. So all that kind of off camber stuff, loose corners, you really do feel like the rear end of the bike just stays stays planted to the ground. Now, at the same time, the other cool thing for the downhills is you don't lose too much poppy playfulness from this coil shock setup. Some of that does have to do with this prototype progressive rear spring that I'm using by them. That should be out a little bit later this year, but at the same time, I have tried this shock without the progressive spring, and you do still get a lot of pop and play that's kind of similar to an air shock, but at the same time, you get a noticeable difference in initial stroke suppleness. Uh, the other thing when it comes time for really kind of chunkier parts of the trail, me being a uh, close to 200 pound rider, you definitely feel like the rear end of the bike just kind of has that monster truck-esque feeling to itself, but you also have the ability to kind of tune it to where you can still pop in and out of corners. And that is something I really did enjoy about this thing. For climbing, what you really do notice with the Jade X is how stiff it is when you lock it out. And you do kind of need the lockout on this as opposed to the Topaz. The Topaz on this setup, I felt like I was still able to kind of leave the shock unlocked and kind of go for those longer more technical style of climbs now with this coil setup you definitely feel that suppleness that's kind of like the the pro on the downhill you feel it on the uphill as well and you do feel a little bit more of a noticeable bobbing sensation on more technical style of climbs as well as fire roads so I did find myself reaching for the lockout quite a bit while using this shock 
But with that being said, I do feel like the lockout is a little bit stiffer on the JDEX than the Topaz. And that was something that was really, I really appreciated for fire road style climbs. I'm able to kind of just lock the thing out, get out of the bike and just kind of sprint out of the saddle. And it is really efficient. So you do have a slight weight penalty to the bike, but at the same time, I feel like the efficiency from that lockout really does help make fire road climbs a little bit more bearable overall. Okay, so I guess this is the part of the video where we're gonna transition to uh, what is the right answer for you? Uh, should you go with a coil shock? Should you go with an air shock? Which one is better? Which one works better on the Ritmo AF? So right off the back, uh, I'm gonna talk about the pros in comparison to the Topaz for the JDX. The pros, much more supple initial stroke, a little bit more traction overall, a little bit more of a uh, Cadillac feeling to the ride on the downhills. It really does have that kind of monster truck magic carpet feeling. I'm not sure if anyone's used magic carpet described suspension before, but here we are using it in this video. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it is a very noticeable change in comparison to the Topaz. Now, with that being said, let's talk about some of the pros to running the Topaz Air Shock. With the Air Shock, I felt like I had a little bit more of a poppy trail bike nature feel to the rear end of the bike. I definitely felt like the rear end of the bike was a little bit more lively than with the coil shock setup. That's not to say that the coil shock didn't have that poppy playful nature. You do have that rebound circuit to play with. And like I said, I am running that progressive spring on here and that also helped uh, definitely kind of make up a little bit for what you end up trading off. Uh, going to a coil setup on the Ritmo AF. The Topaz definitely had a little bit more of a trail kind of feeling to the rear end of the bike, where the Jade X definitely pushes this bike into the all mountain spectrum. And I guess that's where a lot of people have messaged me and said, do you think it's worth it to get both shocks? And I'm gonna have to say here, I don't think I would necessarily have two shocks to run with the same fork. I'm running the Diamond up front. They have the Onyx and they have the Diamond. I feel like running the Jade X on here with the Diamond made me want uh, to go even beefier on the front end of the bike. Now, if you guys noticed in the previous review, I really do like the Diamond. I feel like it's plenty stiff. I feel like it's a really good do everything fork and you get the weight savings there. But with that being said, when paired with the Jade X, even though it was really rad to get that suppleness, have that traction, I did find myself wanting to push the bike faster and faster down trails. And man, it just, it really inspired a lot of confidence in me. Uh, I did find myself a couple of times wishing I did have the Onyx up front. So to answer that question, I do feel like having a Jade X and a Topaz does give you a two bike feeling quiver in one platform, one frame platform. If you do also have a stiffer fork to complement the Jade X. Now, I'm not saying that you can't run the Diamond and the Jade X. Like I said, you get plenty of suppleness. You have a really Cadillac feeling ride from the rear end of the bike. The Diamond still is a very stiff fork. With that being said, I do feel like pairing the Jade X with the Onyx definitely gives you that confidence you need to really just go all out on the trails. And it also gives you the potential to kind of have this be your park bike if you are going up to the BC area or whatever bike park you're at, to basically have this be your park bike quiver, you have that suspension on, you're hitting all these gnarly technical double black BC trails. You guys are probably, if you're like me, you're screaming while you're going down those trails because you are terrified, but at the same time you're pushing the limits. But then you also still have that trail slash all mountain feeling to where you have the weight savings there, you have the ability to kind of go for those all day rides and have a solid suspension combo from that Topaz and Diamond setup. And I feel like those two combos give this bike, uh, that two bike quiver feeling with just having kind of one frame at the end of the day. And yeah, I definitely think there is a lot of potential there. Now, with all of this being said, this is just my personal opinion. I know a lot of other riders out there are running the Jade X shock on the Ritmo AF, or maybe they're just running the Jade X on a different bike. I am really interested. What do you guys think about the shock? What has been your personal experience? What are you running on it? Let us know in the comment section. With that being said, those are my thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys did enjoy this video, if you could hit that like button, and helps out the channel a ton and also consider subscribing to the channel we have a lot of really cool content coming at you guys this week including some new bikes both hannah and i are getting new bikes so we're about to debut those as well uh, as always you guys thank you so much for watching and until next time you guys ride awesome Eww.